Welcome. This is M.A. Ludwig of Jude Maris, and this is a special behind-the-scenes look of a reconstruction, in this case of Byzantine Emperor Justinian the Great. It all starts with a request and a search for images. Somebody writes in and says, I would love to see Justin the Great. This is okay, I'm not a library, so I don't know who that is. I go to look it up. And uh, generally, the image that shows up the most often is probably the right person I'm looking for. Not always, but generally. And in this case, we have a mosaic, which shows up two, three, four times in a row. It is here that I find out that uh, Justin the Great is actually Justin the First, which is also helpful. Next, I go to my favorite place in the world, Wikimedia Commons. Make a donation, you'll get your money's worth. And I look to see if anybody has un uploaded that same image, and they have. And there's one that's in particularly good quality, so I click on that. My next port of call, when I find an image, is who owns it? What are the permissions? What is the licensing? Can I use it? So I scroll down, and uh, my two main things that I look at are the source, whether it's the photographer, the author, and the permission. In this case, the source photographer, the York project, and the permission, as it turns out, is considered to be in public domain, at least in the United States, because any faithful two-dimensional representation of art that is at least 100 years, 100 years old or more is generally considered to be public domain, unless it's stated otherwise. Now that I have my image, I move on to Google. Now this is groundwork that I do, which helps a lot of my reconstructions. I search the web for sometimes a few hours to see if anybody in history has described this man apart from what I see in the artwork. And I will scroll through page by page. This is where I pick up little bits and pieces about his personality as well, which is also extremely handy. Now in this description, apart from being curly-haired, round-faced, and handsome, it says that he looks like the Emperor Domitian, which is a link, so I click over there. It says, okay, so history says he looks like this guy. And fortunately, this page has an image. It says, okay, I see round face, long nose. I get a general idea of what they mean when they say, well, he looks like him. I will go through at least four to six websites, just trying to get pick up little bits and pieces of descriptions that changes slightly from website to website, but after a while it starts to get repetitious because folks get lazy and they start copy-pasting information from one website to another, and I will see identical sentences, you know, in ten websites. But any little bits and pieces, I mean, one website also happens to mention that he has an eagle-like nose, which is, of course, good for me to know, because it's not always obvious in the artwork whether or not the person has an eagle-like nose. Now this particular website also includes somebody's own reconstruction, which I don't discount, and even though they have just taken a living person's face, skin, and morphed it and left the eyes alone, which is rather freakish, it's still valuable information, which I certainly take with me to my reconstructions. This is also the point where I gather information about the person. You know, he was an architect. He loved it. He was passionately in love with his wife. He was a workaholic. He hardly ever slept. You know, he was always busy thinking, doing. And that's handy, handy information to have, because most of the time people don't really know who they're looking at unless they search for him. So it's handy information to have. This is Who's this guy? He says, oh, okay, he, he's this, 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 and this. Yep, now that I have my image, I can bring it into Photoshop CS2, and I begin the reconstruction. Anybody who knows my videos knows that I start almost invariably with the skin, the face, the features. And in this case, the eyes are as big as sunglasses, so I have to bring those down to fit into the skull. 
And people argue with me on that. It says, well, my people had very big eyes. Why do you give them such small eyes? It says, if you saw somebody on the street with eyes as large as those, you would think they were wearing a mask. That is, that is not a natural size for eyes. So I adjust the eyes, bring the eyebrows into proportion, adjust the nose slightly to bring it up, bring the chin down to lengthen the face to more adult-like proportions. He looks rather childlike. And since it was never really determined whether he was blonde or brunette, I chose a middle ground, so he's kind of have a, a fawn hair color, light brown. I do like to pay attention to the regional artist uh, rendition when I can, because I don't discount entirely that it looks absolutely nothing like the guy. Because things stand out to an artist no matter how badly they draw them. Which is still very handy information to have about their features. I mean, do they have an upturned mouth? Do they have droopy eyes? Do they have a cleft in the chin? Artists almost instinctively exaggerate the features that stand out to them, and then they tend to reduce the features that eh, aren't so great or don't really flatter them. And I play on that to bring the entire face back together. Now this is where the information about his personality really comes into play. Because as he was a workaholic, but he was also had a tender side. You know, he loved his wife dearly. And that uh, definitely projects itself, especially in the eyes. So I make it a point to know, if I can, the character of the person. In this particular case, I made a creative decision to leave most of the mosaic as it was. So there would be a stepping point from ancient history to current day. Back in the day, I was actually a sketch artist. I was a portrait artist, and art does run in the family. So I was very well advanced on paper, and I just brought the medium of computers into it when I went to college, and uh, it has brought things to a whole new level, and I'm able to do a lot more in less time using less paper and erasers. <laughs> and that's the end of this presentation. Hopefully you found it enlightening, informative. I feel compelled sometimes to remind people that uh, there is thought that goes into this. There is research. I don't make things up if I can help it. And I try to get the right person <laughs> when I start. I very much appreciate your attention, and we will see you all again next time.